back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Uh, this is lockdown phase two, which has started now, and uh, my intention now is to actually cover um, the major judgments which have come so far from Supreme Court or various other high courts, uh, trying to cover as much as possible from uh, insolvency, arbitration, and other related areas. I will be very happy to take up specific judgments if you would want me to. Uh, this uh, video will also have a PowerPoint presentation which will be running so you will see a lot of slides with information on it. Uh, I hope you will find that helpful. You can always uh, leave your queries in the comment box below and I will try and address them. So getting started with the judgment that I have chosen today is the JP judgment. Uh, JP judgment is the one which had a lot of prominence very recently and it has settled uh, principles as far as section 43 of IBC is concerned and also section 66. Uh, let me just give you a very brief background of how uh, the JP judgment uh, came into existence in terms of what was the, the brief outline uh, and the facts uh, before that. So uh, the entire transaction that started was in the year 2003 when Jeprakash Associates Limited was given the uh, contract to construct the Yamuna Expressway and Jeprakash uh, Associates Limited happens to be a public uh, listed company and uh, they were awarded this uh, contract and a concession agreement was entered between the Yamuna Expressway Development Authority and an SPV was formed which was called as JP Infratech Limited. So in order to get finance, uh, a consortium of banks came and uh, they actually had a partial mortgage of land which was acquired um, and a pledge of 51% of shareholding was held by the parent company which was uh, Jeprakash Associates Limited. Different housing plans were envisaged under this project and uh, there was a construction of real estate project like Wishtown in Noida uh, which was envisaged under this uh, um, scheme. Now what happened there was that it kept going on for some time, the mortgages were going on as well. Um, however, in the year 2017-18, we see that IDBI Bank filed a Section 7 uh, application before NCLT, the adjudicating authority, uh, asking for their uh, uh, payment which was uh, due. It was uh, a very large amount and therefore uh, initially, however, JIL chose to file their objections against the N uh, Section 7 application. However, later on, they withdrew it and uh, therefore the CIRP was con commenced against uh, the corporate debtor. Now, corporate debtor here is JP Infratech Limited. Jeprakash Associates Limited happens to be the parent company and JIL is a subsidiary company. So everywhere that I'm referring to corporate debtor, I basically mean JIL here. Now the IRP uh, who was there, he filed an uh, application before the adjudicating authority, which is the NCLT Allahabad bench. And um, in the application, he states, corporate debtor was in dire need of funds and was facing severe liquidity crunch to complete the construction of projects and deliver flats to home buyers and to honor payment obligations to financial creditors, including the fixed deposit holders. So then NCLT uh, ordered uh, that the company application which was filed under section 43, 45 and section 66 of the act was allowed. Now uh, section 43, 45 and 66 uh, we will be discussing it later on however I'll just tell you what briefly uh, 43 is. 43 is about uh, preferential uh, treatment which is done to in, in a relevant time period um, to a related company and um, then section 66 is uh, uh, primarily fraud fraudulent activities which are con conducted in a company so um, 43 and 45 actually derives out of 43 only so uh, basically there was a release and discharge of the security interest created by corporate debtor in favor of lenders of JAL under the section 44c of IBC was granted uh, and properties which were mortgaged by way of preferential and undervalued transactions were deemed to be vested in the corporate debtor under section 48a of IBC. So what it means in a jargonless term is that whatever were the encumbered properties of JIL 
were which were mortgaged with these financial institutions were then uh, were made unencumbered and passed on back to the corporate debtor. So let me very quickly tell you about what Section Forty Five of the IBC holds. Uh, section 45 is uh, avoidance of undervalued transactions. In, under this section, a liquidator or an IRP can determine that if certain transactions were made during a relevant period were undervalued, then he can make an application to the adjudicating authority and the reversal of transactions can take place and these transactions can be declared as void. This was the entire crux of the matter as far as this went. This was about 800 uh, odd acres of um, unencumbered land which belonged to JIL and which was mortgaged by JAL which is the parent company. Now the matter went before NCLT and it was upturned over there, the order of the NCLT. When it come, came before Supreme Court, the Supreme Court basically uh, formulated two major issues as far as uh, it was in the appeal. First was whether the transactions in question deserve to be avoided as being preferential, undervalued and fraudulent in terms of sections 43, 45 and 66 of the code. And the other question or the issue which was raised was whether the respondents, that is lender of JAL, could be recognized as financial creditors of the corporate debtor which is JIL on the strength of mortgage created by corporate debtor as collateral security of the debt of its holding company that is the JAL. So before we move any further I would like to just introduce you to the parties of the petition uh, of the appeal. Uh, the one of course the first one was uh, Jeffrey Associates Limited which was the um, holding company and JP Infratech Limited, of course, the corporate debtor was there. Um, Sri Anuj Jain, who is the IRP who is appointed in this matter, and IIFCL. Now, IIFCL was the first one who actually uh, said that how is it that, uh, uh, um, you know, the financial creditors, uh, uh, the banks can actually come under the terminology of financial creditors because they the property was mortgaged um, through JAL, um, to the banks and therefore how can uh, JAL's uh, creditors become financial creditors for JIL. It's a very cl complex uh, proposition which was there and interestingly there was the first round of uh, approach that had happened to the Supreme Court uh, where uh, if one can remember Chitra Sharma versus Union of India where you know uh, home buyers were um, uh, seen uh, were identified to be financial creditors that was the first time that something like this had happened although of course after that pioneer urban etc these judgments have come there they have uh, recognized home buyers however there have been several amendments now and now there has there is a stipulation of uh, how many percentage of people you require in order for a petition to survive for a home buyer but that's a discussion for another day so moving on uh, the finding of NCLT uh, with respect to section 43 I think is a very important part that we need to see. Um, the NCLT held as far as section 43 was concerned that the transaction of creating a security interest by way of mortgage in favor of lenders of the third party that is uh, Jay Prakash Associates Limited on an unencumbered land of the corporate debtor without any consideration or counter guarantee cannot be treated as a transfer in ordinary course of business or financial affairs of the corporate debtor. Then further for transactions of a related party, the look back period was two years preceding the insolvency commencement date and hence the relevant period for examining the transactions in question would be from 10-8-2015 to 9-8-2017. Now this part I think becomes very important because uh, there was a, uh, quite a debate and arguments which ensued that would this uh, transaction uh, come under the look back period of two years for related parties. Now what the Supreme Court held was that because there was a remortgage which was done, uh, any remortgage that happens will be deemed as a fresh mortgage and since this remortgage that happened happened be between the period of the look back period therefore this will be considered as uh, coming under the uh, as satisfying sat satisfying the conditions under section 43 
Now this was really important because the look back uh, question was severely impeded. So the Supreme Court observed that the look back period cannot be held in hibernation. Moving on, uh, when it came to impugned transactions, the NCLT then again um, uh, observed that they were all held as preferential transactions and they satisfied conditions which were laid down in section 43. What NCLT said uh, was that they upheld what was observed in IRP's application that GIL was already going through a difficult time and there was already a financial crunch and these unencumbered lands could have been sold or mortgaged and that money could have come to GIL and all these uh, uh, construction which was stopped that could have continued and the consumers or the home buyers who had invested in GIL projects they could have easily received their um, uh, their, their uh, flats in time so this i think was a tremendous uh, step forward also what they observed in continuance was that in view of the above the mortgage of land of uh, corporate debtor in favor of lenders of JEL amounts to transfer of interest in property of corporate debtor for the benefit of JAL, putting it in a beneficial position vis-a-vis -vis creditors and therefore a preferential transaction under section 43.2 A and B. They further said that the transactions were executed within the look back period of two years before the commencement of insolvency proceeding and were covered under section 43.4 A. What is in of importance is to note here that JAL was actually put an, in an ad, um, uh, advantageous position and how was that because they were able to receive a high value working capital by way of loans etc and also JAL's liability towards its own lenders had reduced considerably and such heavily encumbered property was not part of you know uh, the JAL asset book so it was when let's say for example if we would have moved towards section 53 and the waterfall mechanism taking place we would have seen that the available estate which would have been there for the different kind of creditors to satisfy them that would have not been there because that that, that entire encumbered property was then out of the available estate for corporate debtors. This I think was an important thing and moving on to section 43, the preferential transactions related parties in the relevant time period, GIL gave preference by way of mortgage transactions for benefit of related party JAL for and on account of antecedent financial debt owed to such person. And by way of impugned transaction, JAL is put in a better position vis-a-vis -vis other creditors as these heavily encumbered assets will not form part of the available estate of corporate debtor. Impugned transactions are for benefit of JAL who is related party of corporate debtor. JAL and its creditors and surety by virtue of antecedent to operational debts as also other facilities were extended by it. Scheme of IBC is to disapprove and disregard such preferential transaction which falls within the ambit of section 43 and to ensure that any property likely to have been lost due to such transaction is brought back to the corporate debtor and if any encumbrance is created to remove such encumbrances so as to bring corporate debtor back on its wheels. Now, there was an important part of it which was uh, required for um, understanding which was as to what is uh, the definition of ordinary course of business in this entire scenario. Uh, what is the definition of ordinary course of business? Uh, because that also forms an important part of section 43. Now a reliance was placed on Downs Distributing Company. This is an, a judgment uh, by the High Court of Australia and uh, this was pointed that uh, as was pointed out in such and such uh, yeah, as per the Bankruptcy Act, um, one, good faith, two, valuable consideration and three, ordinary course of business. This last expression, it was said, does not require an investigation of the course pursued 
in any particular trade or vocation and it does not refer to what is normal or usual in the business of the debtor or that of the creditor the argument here was that because um, it is normal for financial institutions to have uh, third party security being mortgaged when they are lending loans so here if a parent company like jayaprakash associates was requiring some uh, uh, finances for uh, as far as working capital went if they were mortgaging the uh, security interest of fund, of the properties of their subsidiary company was that bad in law one and secondly was that something which was actually done in ordinary course of business or not this the all of this would was um, said that it the in nclt um, said that you know this was all done as part and parcel of the ordinary course of business however um, what happens in downs distributing company is that it says it means that the transaction must fall into place as part of the undistinguished common flow of business done that it should form part of the ordinary course of business as carried on calling for no remark and arising out of no special or particular situation i think that answers a lot about as far as section 43 was concerned and therefore the supreme court uh, very rightly observed that uh, uh, the transactions in question were hit by section 43 of the ibc and that the adjudicating authority was justified in issuing the necessary directions coming back to the second issue uh, which was there as far as uh, these appeals were concerned was that whether lenders of jal could be categorized as financial creditors uh, of corporate debtor in the present case a corporate debtor had mortgaged its property for creating collateral security for the debt of jal now the corporate debtor is not a borrower it has created a mortgage in favor of financial institutions for creating co collateral security for the money borrowed by jal and in this it is very important to understand this specific point that in the said transaction time value of money is not involved as far as the corporate debtor is concerned the corporate debtor's liability is not regarding the debt owed by the jayaprakash associates limited which is the parent company in case of default in making payment by the principal borrower for which security interest has been created by corporate debtor by mortgaging its property in favor of applicant banks the debt amount can be realized from the sale of mortgaged property but not from the corporate debtor therefore when further uh, the question arose that whether jal can also be treated as a financial creditor or not on this issue it was said that um, such lenders of jal on the strength of mortgages in question may fall in the category of secured creditors but such mortgages being neither towards any loan facility or advance to the corporate debtor nor towards protecting any facility or security of the corporate debtor it cannot be said that the corporate debtor owes them any financial debt within the meaning of section 58 of ibc and hence such lenders of jal do not fall in the category of financial creditors of the corporate debtor so therefore i think this judgment is of prominence if you want to understand section 43 if you want to understand who all will clar uh, will fall under financial creditor and also as far as third party securities are concerned this is an this is a judgment which is very well written and even though it's a li little lengthy running into about 78 pages i would suggest that all of you actually give it a read um, especially during the lockdown period because it will help you in understanding a lot of important concepts of ibc should you want to practice under insolvency and bankruptcy court uh leaving you with that thought uh, thank you so much for watching my video i hope you like it um please do subscribe to my youtube channel and if you have any comments do share it in the comment box below i shall try and endeavor to ensure that i answer each and every one of them thank you so much for watching and take care